Thank you for joining me today on Instinctive Addiction Archery. I'm Jeff Phillips, and I hope and pray that what I bring you here today will be of uh, incredible confidence booster. I hope it'll be a confidence booster for you. I hope it'll be encouraging and help you in some kind of way. Guys, I want to share my heart with you today. That's right. I'm going to do some shooting, but I'm going to share my heart with you. The traditional archery journey, as great as it is, as exciting as it is, when a man decides to leave his compound and pick up that recurve or that longbow and get out there and start shooting and learn how to shoot the bow and wants to hunt with it, wants to be a successful bow hunter with traditional equipment. When he does that, there is a reason. That's right. It doesn't just happen. There's a reason that it happens, just like it happened for me. And once you get the taste of it, it will never leave you. It will not leave you. You might forsake it. You might forsake it this year or the next year or a year or two after. You may switch them up or whatever the case may be, but guess what? You will come back. You will. So my word of encouragement today to you is don't even go down that road. You're just beating yourself up for no reason. That's right. You're going to beat yourself up and there's just no sense in it. It happened to me, guys. It did. Let me share a quick story with you. A few years back, I had taken up the traditional journey. And I mean, I dove all into it. Man, I just, I had that desire to hunt with nothing but a recurve. That's it. I mean, I was just eat up with it. <laughs> so I went into the hunting season and I had my mind focused. I had everything right. Went in and the first evening that I climbed a tree, I killed a big, big doe, a big doe. I was so proud of that deer. When I saw that Luminox zip right through those lungs and she made it 35 yards and was done with a big old grizzly broadhead and everything else. I mean, man, I was so excited. I almost mounted that deer. All right. So you think, well, okay, well, where are you going with this? Well, I'll tell you where I'm going with it. Okay, so here in Alabama, we have a very long season. We start in October, and we don't end until February. And we have three ruts here. Well, as the first rut started in a certain sector of the county, because it's like one, two, three ruts that we get to, to hunt here, which is such a blessing, the more the rut began, the more difficult it began to be to, to get a good close shot, especially at a buck, and I wanted to kill a buck. Well, I made it into rifle season, and time started getting a little tough because of the pressure. Rifle season, uh, the, the shots were just not there. I couldn't get the shot that I wanted, so I started uh, thinking, hmm, maybe I should... Uh, pick my compound back up maybe you know i might need to make that 40 and 50 yard shot because i had killed deer at 70 yards and that's got honest truth i had taken bucks at 70 yards with a compound in my life i have i don't encourage that by any means but but i've done it and i had that kind of confidence in my setup i did but the temptation came along that year because the shots were not presenting themselves like I had hoped that they would. And when it gets cold weather and more and more and more difficult to kill a deer with a bow as it is, with our rifle season going, muzzleloader season going, lots of pressure, it's tough enough not to gun hunt. But it's sure enough really tough to keep leaving the house with a recurve in your hand during the rut. Well, guys, I made it all the way through to the biggest rut that we have of the three, which is in January. On public ground, I had went in 
and I had scouted and I found some absolute sizzling hot buck sign. I mean, they were revved up. I, my confidence went through the roof that I was about to get a shot at a monster buck. I left out one morning and I put my Matthews in the back seat of the truck. That's right, I put my Matthews in the back seat of the truck. And this bow was only a year old, tuned perfectly, deadly. And I thought, I'm not playing today, I'm taking this bow. My buddies were crossbow hunting. I took that bow with me. Well, guess what? I made it 300 yards. 300 yards, I made it down the road. And I turned around, I come back, unlocked the door, walked in the house, I hung that bow up on the rack, I grabbed that recurve. I left out and I said, you know what? If I don't get a shot, it's okay. If I miss, I'm gonna be down, but it's okay. I'm gonna set up where I can make this happen. Whatever I've gotta do, guys. And I had a peace come over me that, you know what? I had finally gotten to that point from going back and forth and back and forth so many years and I'm not talking about one or two years, I'm talking about several years, I had shot both compound and traditional. But when it came to hardcore hunting, I would revert to my compound because I felt more confident in it. And guys, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you choose to do. But I'm telling you what's gonna happen to you. Just like it did with me, I had a burning desire after spending all the time that I spent trying to master that bow to get it done with that. I would not be satisfied with any kill with anything else but that bow. I was all in. I finished out that season as happy as a man can be because I was hunting with what I wanted to be hunting with. That's right. And yes, I did take a deer. It wasn't a monster, but I did take a good buck with the old recurve <laughs> got him mounted so anyway man i'm telling you this because i know what's going to happen if you're thinking about giving up your traditional archery and go into that compound because you feel like you can make a longer shot or the or it's faster or, or whatever the case may be you're gonna find yourself coming right back again so you might as well stick with it why don't you just take that precious bow that you've spent so much time with and just let it become part of you and just try to hunt a little bit harder, hunt, set up a little bit better, be patient. And I promise you guys, it is worth it. It's worth it. When the moment of truth comes and you make that shot and it happens for you, you'll never get over it. Just like when I took that dough, that first dough I took, it lit a fire in me that could not be put out, that there was nothing else I could do that would compare to it. Fast forward to now, to today. Guys, I don't even think about hunting with anything else. I don't. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. I, all my, when my friends rifle hunt, crossbow hunt, compound hunt everybody carries everything guys that hunt with me all the time they carry the latest and greatest of everything and they kill deer with them that's great and fine and i don't say anything to them because they're not where i'm at and i don't expect them to be it's a personal journey it's a personal choice but with me i have gotten to that point where not only am i beyond confident but I'm okay with whatever the outcome is because I at least I'm out there with what I love to shoot. Why do I come out here and shoot in the yard all the time, every spare minute when I'm not working? Why do I do that? Because I'm preparing for hunting season. I mean, it's just like this, guys. Whatever bow you shoot, and I don't care who makes it, what brand it is, that, that doesn't make any difference. I don't care if you got an ILF rig a custom bow or a, a cheap mass produced bow who cares as long as it's tuned and you got your arrow set up right and you shooting that bow good there is no reason for you not to be in the woods with that bow 
No reason whatsoever. Because you can do it. I promise you. And it will mean so much to you. Think about it this way. And I'm going to shoot a little bit. Think about it. Hunting season comes in. And you take your compound to the woods. And you kill a deer with it. You're going to be happy. But you will never get that thought out of your head. You will never, ever get that thought out of your head. Man, I wished... Wished I'd, wished I'd have took my recurve or I wished I'd have took my longbow or, you know, man, it'd been nice if I'd have got this deer with, with that, man. So I'm, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to try it. I'll, you know, I'll kill me a couple and then I'll, I'll hunt with it a little bit or whatever. You can do that all day long. You can do it over and over and over and over. It's never going to leave you guys. It's not. It's not. Once you have picked one of these up and you get to shooting it, the desire to kill deer with it or whatever you're hunting it's not going to leave you guys and it will never be the same you will never reach that point of satisfaction once you have done it you will never get over it and you will never reach that point of satisfaction when you walk up to an animal that you have taken with what some call the struggle stick I don't know why they're named the struggle stick to begin with because I just don't feel that way about them at all. I feel like if you get out there and you practice enough, I mean, even shooting instinctive, and especially guys that, that aim, you know, that gap shoot and whatever else, well, they're more accurate than most compound shooters would ever dream about being. I've got friends, guys, that shoot gap. Then I promise you, on a 3D range, they're more accurate. They shoot higher scores than compound shooters do. Uh, I mean, they, they can blow them away. Uh, and, and matter of fact, <laughs> I got to share this one with you guys. This is, this, is, this is what is so cool. Why do I love shooting instinctive? Why do I love shooting traditional bows so much? We went to a shoot this last weekend. A bunch of guys, we went just having a good time. And they had a golf ball, a plastic golf ball, hanging by a string in front of a bag. And it was a novelty shoot, guys, uh, for a chance to win a cell camera or whatnot. And this is a compound tournament. This is, I mean, this is a major compound tournament. They just happened to have a traditional class, and we went. Okay. My buddy that went with us, as soon as he walked up to the stake, he shot and pinned that ball. And everybody around was like, they couldn't believe it. With a little recurve, he had a recurve in his hand, and he smoked it. My turn came. God honest truth. My turn came. I walked up there 18 yards. Shot dead center. Pinned the ball. The compound guys could not believe it. They, we, we earned respect. We honestly earned respect that day that traditional bows are really not that much of a handicap. And I will guarantee you that everybody up there, they watched us like a hawk all day long. Every target we went to, and there was a bunch of us there, they watched us and just, they were amazed. Shooting, running targets, everything that they had. Guys were just watching us shoot longbows and recurves, and they were so amused with it. So I know that desire's in them. It's in them like everybody else, guys. It's just fun. You can't help it. So I don't consider my handicap. If you practice, there is no reason why you can't get it done. No reason why whatsoever. It's like I walk out here and I, I pick a target. It doesn't matter which one or what. Uh, and I just look at it and I shoot it. But I'm always thinking about hunting. I'm always thinking about it, preparing for that hunting season. The split second that I shoot a target, my mind is on, well, what if it was a real deer right there? See, could I kill him? If that was a real deer, could I make this happen? You got to be mental. It, it's got to be that way, guys. It does. Just like this. I love shooting bows. I absolutely love it. Busted my 
not at all. Best recreation in the world to me. Nothing better. Nothing better. You just got to do it, man. You can't, you can't give up. You got to stick with it. You just do. And it's okay, guys. If you, for some reason, decide, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to pick up my gun or my compound or whatnot, and I'm going to hunt with it. And I'm going to hunt with it maybe late season or whatever. If that's what you got to do, then do it. But I encourage you guys today. I encourage you with all my heart. Stick with it. Don't forsake your bow. Think of it personally. Think of it as if, as if your bow is somebody. Your, your bow is somebody. Somebody you care about. Because you've bonded with it. You've spent so much time with it. I mean, man, it's just it's become part of you. Why would you forsake them? I mean, it's that's kind of the way I feel when I, I have my bows. And if I don't give them bows a chance to go out there in the woods and do, do what they're designed to do, I feel like I'm letting them down. I mean, honestly, I do. So, guys, you may find that to be uh, a little weird, but it's the truth. It really is. Uh, and until a man shoots traditional, he will not understand such things. He will not. But I promise you, if you go out there with a clear mind, 100% clear mind, with confidence, you will be successful. You truly will, guys. You will be successful. There's no two ways about that. And I just pray that, that this might be a little bit of an encouragement to somebody that might be struggling. Maybe, maybe you're that guy that's just dealing with that. And, you know, it's the temptation of uh, giving up your traditional. It's no different than any other temptation. I'm, I mean, temptations come every day, all day to all of us. I mean, everybody's tempted by something all the time. And if that's your temptation to give up traditional and go to back to your compound or your crossbow or whatever, don't beat yourself up over it. Just don't, don't beat yourself up, but think about it. Think about it long and hard. What really means the most to you? Is it about killing the animal or is it about the hunt? And I never understood that for a long time. But I read articles, I listened to the older guys that talked about such things and didn't make a lot of sense to me. Well, now it does. Because there comes a point in your life when you have taken enough animals that it's not always about the kill. It's about the chase. It really is, guys. It's about the chase. It's about the hunt. Being out there in what God has created, what he's given us to enjoy, and just being a part of it. And I feel like that you are more in tune with the creator, with the created, when you have a stick bow in your hand. I, I just do. I can't explain that, guys, but that's just how I feel because you're going back and doing it the way that it was done years and years ago. So I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. I love you so much. Pray that everything that we do will bring honor and glory to the good Lord. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I beg you, I beg you, Give him a chance. Guys, I don't know how else to explain it, but that is the single most important thing that you will ever do. You have to answer that question. And I'm not going to sit here and preach to you, but I won't tell you out of love. You have to answer that question that's going to be asking. If you died today, where will you be? Can you answer with assurance? That if you die, that you will have a home in heaven. If you cannot, if you cannot answer that, I got good news for you. All it takes is a prayer. All it takes, we're not talking religion here. We're talking salvation. All it takes is asking Jesus to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins and be your Lord and Savior. And he will do it just like that. He'll make you a new man. He'll put a new spirit in you. 
He'll, he'll make all things new. He'll give you new desires. He'll do it. And he'll do it in an instant. He promises that. He's waiting on you. So if you're struggling with the spiritual side of life, not just hunting, but if there's something going on in your life, something, maybe you can't explain it. You don't understand what's going on, but you don't have peace. You can't sleep at night. Maybe you have a little bit of anxiety, a fear of dying. You don't have to. We don't have to fear death. No, <laughs> we do not have to fear death, guys. We don't. Because if we are born again and our name is written in that Lamb's Book of Life, we're guaranteed a home in heaven. I mean, we're guaranteed. There is no two ways about it. We are guaranteed, just like we were born into this world, we can be born into the kingdom of God just the same way. We're born of flesh to start with, and then we must be born of the Spirit. <laughs> Jesus told Nicodemus the same thing. He was a smart fellow, but he didn't understand that, and Jesus had to break it down to him the easy way. <laughs> he didn't quite understand it, but anyway, he got the point. And all that matters is he did get saved. So anyway... Guys, that's what it's all about. Jesus loves you. He loves you and he loves me. He gave his life for us so that we could have a home in heaven. Thank you for joining me. Amen.